Hey, Phrasiacs. Oh my gosh. We haven't had a minute to check in with each other for two months, and I am so sorry. Today, I'm going to be talking about a huge update with my egg donor situation, KJ's potty training journey. (sighs) Is he three and a half and still using a pass? Yes. And... Oh, yeah, I look crazy because I've had a chemical peel. Um, This is my third one. I feel like I'll probably become known as the chick on the internet with chemical peels, like the peel face. Anyhow, so I'm so sorry I have not done a personal update. Normally on Tuesdays on my show, historically, for the past, I don't know, four years, it has been Mondays I interview anybody I want. Tuesday is my personal life, an update, and lots of times Schman joins the pod. Wednesday's TLC talk, all the TLC gossip. Thursday and Saturday are David Yontif behind the velvet rope. Friday is usually just another kind of anything goes, sort of, you know, Friday pop off. And then um, Sunday, I play a best of because I now, if you guys can believe this, I have been podcasting eight years, going on nine years. I have like 2,500 podcast episodes. And there's, there's virtually... There's literally no way on your Spotify, on your Apple account to search. It's it's not easy to find an old episode. If you don't get the right keywords, you can't go back and find an interview. So I often replay some of my most listened to stuff. But anyhow, uh, you know, look, thank you for sticking with me. I know a lot of you are new and discovering the show because of Sister Wives content. Over the years, it's become huge for me. So that's why when the Sister Wives season is in in season, I have been covering it nonstop. And there's been so much interesting things happening in this this reality TV family's life outside of the show, including court cases and custody battles and home sales and home purchases and millions of dollars at stake. Like, it's just the drama is so good. So I've been covering that and replacing my Tuesdays with a lot of breaking news that comes down the line with sister wives. So sorry. Hopefully, maybe some of you like that, and then I promise when Sister Wives concludes this winter, I will get back to a lot of my personal life because there's a lot going on. So here's a big update with my egg donor situation. Schman and I are using an egg donor, and we officially have her, and everything has been cleared by a genetic counselor because we had to meet with a genetic counselor, and all systems are a go. Yay! (laughs) I can't wait. And we are set to have our first transfer in January. Okay. Hopefully our first and only transfer. Cause I'm good with just carrying one more child. And then we are also doing the foster to adopt situation through LA County and the um, social workers here in the County. We're going through the County. We are not going through an agency. And that was kind of after a lot of back and forth with agencies, but we decided we were going to go direct to the County because my dear friend, Rob Shear who runs Comfort Cases, an incredible organization, check them out, has just a lot of contacts nationwide, but in the LA County area. So we thought, you know what, we're going to get certified and we are halfway through that process, but it definitely takes a long time. We had to do a live scan, which is like background check. We have to go and do a CPR class all day. We have to do a three-day in-person training, which I'm sure is going to walk us through the process of fostering to adopt because it's very emotional. Especially here in the state of California, the ultimate goal is to reunite and and join back a child with their biological family. The outcomes are the best, and it's what we all want, right? But unfortunately, we all know this. There's just so many situations where that's not going to be possible. The parents can't get it together. You know, it's just mentally emotionally drug addict wise there it's just not going to happen. So how do we get a child a safe forever home? And hopefully Schman and KJ and new baby, hopefully all of us can provide that for someone who is meant to be in our family. But egg donor situation is happening in January. Can't wait. So excited. Love the woman. And I guess if you've been following this whole thing, people have had two questions. How did we get to the place that we were using an egg donor? And haven't I changed donors a couple of different times? Yes and yes. (laughs) Yes. First one, how do we get to a place of using an egg donor? Well, I'm 42. And the bottom line is this. Once you're 42, the chances of IVF success are very, very, very small. If I were 32, I would be doing rounds of IVF. I'd be in it to win it. I'd be doing some sort of special diet protocol, but I'm not. 
I haven't, all I do is exercise. I lift weights and I'm fat from the IVF bloat. I did IVF in March, February, March, and I swear I've not been able to lose the IVF bloat since then. But nobody wants to hear about that. Anyhow, so 42, IVF, the chances of it working are so slim. And we've seen, you know, multiple IVF doctors. We've gone to so many. It's definitely been a challenge for me in LA to find a good IVF doctor, have a great OBGYN. Don't love the IVF doctor so far out here, but I think we found him. We're going to see Dr. Andy Wong and heard amazing things, amazing things about Dr. Wong. Very excited. Love our phone calls. And we are doing an egg donor because just that's just it. The chances of IVF working are slim. We've had three miscarriages, including one which was a molar pregnancy that I had back when I was 36, a partial molar, which is so rare to begin with. And I feel like we've given it all we've got naturally. Yes, could I maybe conceive, is there a healthy egg in there? Like everyone tells me, sure, there's a healthy egg. But in the past year, we've had two miscarriages, one at 13 weeks after we had already celebrated the gender reveal. It was a girl. We were over the moon. We couldn't wait. And literally 10 days after we did the gender reveal party, we there was no heartbeat. So there was that. Bef- then right after that, we got pregnant again. At seven weeks, we lost the baby, no heartbeat. It's just really what it comes down to, because I've had every test under the sun, like I know so many of you have had, is just age, right? Age, bad luck. And so I want to up my chances. I, Schman and I, are. we've been through the heartache. We've been through the uncertainty. And it's like, yeah, I want to roll the dice with a 27-year-old's eggs and hope to God <laughs> that those chances are better, right? It's hard to bring a child into this world. That's why we're doing an egg donor. And I've heard everything that I've heard from women who have used egg donor, the biggest thing they've said to me is, I wish I had done it years earlier. I wish I had, because the hardest part with using an egg donor is you think it's not my DNA. Like, am I going to feel connected to this child? I know my own genetic history. What about theirs? Now, these profiles that they have now are awesome. They give in-depth detail. They do genetic blood testing. They do all kinds of family history testing. But it's still, you know, you you feel like, am I going to connect? Is this baby going to be mine? But every, every blessed woman that I know that has done it is like the moment the baby is here is like, why didn't I do this years earlier? And so I just, my OBGYN finally said to me, he's like, move on to an egg donor. He's like, you could, you could have five more miscarriages. Maybe you'll get a good one, but it's just your age working against you. And we know we want to have another child. So here we are. So we're doing the transfer. The other thing people ask is, are you going to pick the gender? Dr. Wong, I love Dr. Wong had the best response to me because I've gone back and forth about this. He said, look, Sarah, I've, we've purchased eight eggs. And he's like, let's unthaw them. Hopefully they all live. They all go to embryos. They all fertilize. They all go to embryos. And let's take the best quality, the best graded one. Let's implant it. And we're not going to, we're not going to gender test. Let's just go with the best egg with the best shot. And then any embryos you have left over, let's PGT test. We'll We'll find out. So if you decide down the road you want to have another kid, you know you've got two boys on ice and two girls or whatever. So this is how they're going to get me. This is (laughs) if I don't get that girl and then I have two girls on ice, I'll be like, well, having another kid at 45. So anyhow, there you go. That's what that's the answer to gender testing. And I love it. I'm happy with that plan. And the other question is people have asked, haven't you changed donors. Yes, we have switched donors. We are, this is the third one. Not because anything was wrong with any of them. The first one, she and Schman had the same, were genetic carriers for the same sort of high iron deficiency issue. I freaking loved her. She was amazing. Said like everything on her profile that she drank. Because a lot of people on their profile are like, I never drink. I never smoke. I'm like, okay, you guys are 24. I, you're probably like not everybody, but I feel like a lot of you are out getting wasted and smoking a joint. Sorry. This girl was like, I've drank, I've done Coke twice. I'm like, this is my type of girl. You know, at least she's being fully, <laughs> fully, fully transparent. But we didn't end up going with her because they essentially, once they know that both of you, your husband and the, the donor are a carrier, of course, right? 
They don't want you, they don't want that child to then have a one in 25 chance, which is what they have of being carriers of that disorder. So they want additional testing. Like the money was just, it was crazy to use that donor. It wasn't worth it when there were so many other amazing people. Okay. So then we picked another donor, loved her, six feet tall, Amazon chick, like Amazonian. We like were, we loved it. We're like, we're going to have an athlete. But she had very dark haired features, which I really didn't pay attention to. And, you know, KJ's blondish. I'm dirty blondish if I knew my real hair color. Schmano's always been dirty blondish. So my mother in law, when I showed her the profile, was like, okay, well, you know, don't worry. She was saying this like so lovingly, but don't worry. She'll fit, you know, your child, she or he will fit right in because, you know, um, Dan's older brother has really dark hair. So th- that's not like uncommon. And it was and when she said it, it, I was like, oh, wait a minute. You're right. Like I never really noticed that not only is she six feet tall, which isn't really our family. And she has really dark hair features, like really jet black. So I was like, well, I don't know, Shvan, what do you think? And then he's like, no, I didn't really think about it either. Maybe we should just see other donors. And we're using Ovation Donor. Um, God, what's the, is it Ovation Donor Group? Let me get the name. These guys are like freaking phenomenal. Amazing as well. Not sponsored. If you're using an egg donor, can't recommend them enough. Uh, Ovation Donor Services. Highly recommend. I think their pool of donor applicants is off the charts good. And like very diverse. Black donors, Asian donors, Hispanic donors. I mean, like I wanted to go with a lot of donors that weren't my race, but you know what I mean? Like, it's like, okay, well, if we're trying to all like kind of just all look the same, that's sort of maybe not the plan. So didn't do that. But anyhow, they will, you put your notifications on and they'll send you a notification. And this girl popped up, dirty blondish hair, sort of looked like me, fell in love with her, fell in love with her. So we're moving forward. That's her. That's her. She has some kids of her own. She's young. And I just loved everything in her profile. She was like, my genes are strong. I have this healthy profile. And I'm like, I'm so in. I'm so in. So that is our plan. Hopefully, I know you guys will. You'll send me good vibes and prayers. January is the transfer date. I'm doing a bunch of doctor's appointments. Just like I just did a gut test. I'm doing um, a sonogram coming up, a saline sonogram to make sure the fallopian tubes are clear and ready. So doing all that. And we are on track. I cannot wait. I'm so, so, so happy and excited. And hopefully Dr. Wong will let me film a lot of it so I can document it. And any tips, any tips? How did your, uh, how'd you get your uh, egg donor to stick the first time? Send them my way. You know, I'm on IG, TikTok everywhere. Leave them here in the YouTube comments. So that's how. And people ask me, do you have any... How are you emotionally with it? Do you have any second guesses? I don't. Once in a while, I'll be just honest, and I know any woman listening to this who's been through miscarriages or wants to have a kid, when Giselle Bundchen, who is 44 years old, used to be married to Tom Brady, now is with a new man, has her boyfriend. When it was announced that she was pregnant a couple weeks ago, I will say that for a moment, you know, I guess it's, it's not really doubting yourself, but it's like, oh. I wonder if that's her own eggs. Like, did she get pregnant naturally? Must be so nice. Like she's, you know, I think you just have this moment of envy maybe more than anything for some women in their 40s that can do it. But no, I'm emotionally at a great place for me. And, you know, to be honest with you, Schman and I have been trying naturally up until I just started birth control as well because I think they want to control when the, you know, when I'll start my cycle, when I'll ovulate, when we'll do the transfer. So Shman and I have been trying. I Now, and I tracked ovulation for a while this summer, then I haven't, which the ovulation tracker does make a difference, but we've we've been trying and nothing, nothing has happened. So I don't have any doubts. I don't have any regrets. And I know it's going to be really great. So there you go. And what about KJ's potty training and passy journey? So KJ still has a passy, only at night. He's three and a half. Why did we decide to do this? After you guys had given me great tips to get rid of it. I So we talked to our couples therapist who we love and we see once a month, Lee. And I was saying to Lee, you know, it, one of the hardest parts with parenting, I, I think with life, right, is like you, you look 
for other people, for social cues, for going with the crowd is popular. You know, it's hard. You kind of look to other people to what to do with your own life. And so I said, you know, a lot of our friends, like the kids don't have passies anymore. But for KJ, it brings him so much joy at night. Like it's his comfort. It's his routine. Like he loves it. He's so little and cute still. And he's just like, mommy, can I have passy? And it's like, yes. So she was like, look, if it's working for you, just keep it for now. Keep it. There's going to be tons of time to take it away. And he doesn't use it at school. He doesn't use it during the day. He just uses it at nighttime. So she's like, look, if it's working for you, go for it. And my friend, Nicole, who I love, who has six kids, five or six, I can't remember, Nicole, she wrote to me and she was like, look, with our first child, we were so regimented about the passy. We took the passy away. We cried it out for nights, no passy. And she said, my child has anxiety and like has grown as an adult to have anxiety. The other kids, we just let them do whatever they wanted. They could keep the passy. They could get rid of the passy. And she's like, I think it was much better. Now, she's, she said to me, does the anxiety have anything to do with the passy? I have no idea. But she's like, just to give you an idea, keep it if it's working. So we're keeping it. We're keeping it for now. That's the passy update. Uh, all right, I'm going to tell you about potty training journey, but I want to thank Dr. Will Neem at Horizon Fibroids. You guys, thank you so much for listening to my sponsors. I know sometimes the commercials seem overwhelming. I want to keep giving you free content. Thank you for listening. If you could listen to one or two commercials and purchase from my sponsors, it would mean everything to me and it keeps the content coming to you for free. So you have some escapism, something you can listen to, engaging or in the background, whatever you want to do. So listen to a sponsor. And one of the ones that I love that's my favorite is Dr. Will Neem at Horizon Fibroids. If you're in the DC region, Dr. Will Neem has three locations, Rockville, Gaithersburg, and Frederick, Maryland. He's a top fibroid doctor in the country. Did you know this? I just learned this from Dr. Will. You do not need a hysterectomy to get rid of your fibroids. You don't. You absolutely do not need a hysterectomy. And yet thousands of women are getting them every single year. Do not get a hysterectomy to treat your fibroids until you go and see Dr. Will Neem. Horizonfibroids.com. They accept almost all insurance. You can make an appointment online and check your insurance carrier. Go to horizonfibroids.com. KJ is fully PP potty trained. Woohoo! Yes, my baby. He wears underwear all day long. And I was saying to you guys, we have tried. So he did poop on the potty once. He pooped on the potty once and we gave him a train. He got a full train. It was the best day of his life. He has not pooped on the potty since. So he won't poop at school, which the school tells me is like totally normal. A lot of the kids don't poop at school. So I said, okay, that's great. He sleeps with his in his underwear for his nap time. I mean, when he's not disruptive to the class because he's like a little bit of a tyrant as well. But anyhow, so he fully PP potty trained. So proud of him. But then at night when he comes home, he's like, mommy, I need my diaper. I'm like, KJ, no, you can go, we can go in the potty. Okay, I'm going to go in the potty because we give him gifts. We have all these gifts wrapped in the house. And every time he poops on the potty, he gets a gift. We're thinking, or we were thinking this was going to be just major, major motivation. <laughs> I think we started, <laughs> we, we gave him the train too soon. Like the train should have been the finale, like the fifth poop on the potty. The fifth dump should have been the train instead of we led with that one. And now there's no... <laughs> Like none of the gifts are as big. So I think we messed up. But how did you, okay, did your child poop once on the pot and how'd you get him back on? So we, he'll sit on the potty for a while. He'll like sit there and strain. He'll be like, oh, mom, I'm trying to go. I'm like, all right, well, just relax. You don't have to like strain. We even have a stuffed animal seagull that we put on the potty and then we put raisins in the toilet and we're like, Cecil, you know, seagull just pooped. He's like, oh my gosh, good job, seagull. Seagull gets to open a gift. And we're like, no. You poop, you get to open the gift. Okay, seagull. How did you, okay, so did your child poop once and then how'd you get him back on? Because Schman and I are ready for him to not poop in his diaper. He goes and hides in the closet, loafs in his diaper, and let, it is like a full-on human. These three and a half year olds, it is a full, this is not a Pomeranian poop. Like it is, <laughs> we're at the phase now. We're like, dude, you got to get on the toilet and flush. If you can do this for pay. So I don't know, did you, 
A- any tips? How'd you get him to go once and then again? Or will it just come over time? Oh, we're waiting. At, we keep we keep thinking we're getting close, but we're just not close enough. So there's that. Those are all the personal updates with us. I, I, you know, I've talked about it since we've moved to LA, but we are getting closer to buying a house. And I don't know. Is it, it do you just let life come at you all at once? Should we buy a house now too? Or should we get the baby under our belt? What'd you do? Did you do it all at once? I mean, I'm getting a chemical peel, having a child, doing an egg donor transfer, got a kid, doing foster to adopt, and then trying to buy a house. Is this too much? I'm a woman that loves to do too much. I love to be busy. Not always a good trait. Not always a good trait. So, and I I mean, if we buy a house, when we buy a house, I'm going to have to document that whole thing. It's like buying a house for the first time. I don't have any clue. No clue. None whatsoever. So I might need your help there. But I think we have a lot. We've got a lot on our plates. We're tackling a lot. Maybe just one more kid is a good, maybe we should do that and then purchase the house as we need it. So anyhow, so excited. Can't wait to have some pregnancy news for you guys because it's been it's been like a year and a half, two years I've been talking about this journey, as you guys know. And being, you know, getting pregnant again, whole thing, big, you know, huge thing. So there you have it. What else? Oh, and I got to, you know, I'm sure you've all seen my chemical peel. It's a mess. This is my third chemical peel. I love a chemical peel. I have a love-hate relationship with it. You can go and see Dr. Farouz in Beverly Hills when you're here. He's Stasi Schroeder's plastic surgeon, the nicest human. His office is so sweet too. Not pretentious, not snobby. I love them. But yeah, my skin is shedding off. You can see it everywhere. It's not really attractive. And I love a chemical peel, but there's just two or three days. The itch is insane. That's what the part I hate about it. You're applying lotion. You're trying not to touch your face and itch it. You can see it on my YouTube. The results are so good. Fine lines, wrinkles, as I mentioned, all skin types. So good if you have acne or acne scarring. Oh my God. Amazing. Just you got to get through a week and it sheds for like, it sheds for like seven days. They always are like, oh, it'll shed for like two or three. That's what they say on that. The, I got this time I get a perfect peel. But you guys saw me right after KJ was born. I got the TCA 30. That one's the real. That one was bad. That one, that one was two weeks. This one will be two weeks too. But it's not like the, the TCA one, the skin turned brown. It looked like Tamara Judge, the burn victim thing. It looked pretty. Um, it looked pretty bad. So anyhow, chemical peel. Yeah. Love, love, love. Um, okay. All right, guys. Good to check in with you. There's my whole egg donor update. Thank you for listening. Huge show ahead. I know, obviously, today's election day, so a lot of people have a lot of anxiety about it. I'm going to be putting out new shows all week long. If you just need some escapism, I figured let this show be it, because obviously with Sister Wives, mindless, mindless entertainment. Bravo mindless entertainment, you know? But there's something to be said for escapism. We all need it. We all need to do it. It's why I turn on these shows. I go and fold laundry. I come back. I haven't missed a thing. So there you have it. All right. Be sure to be following me on TikTok at The Sarah Fraser Show or on Reddit, reddit.com slash r slash The Sarah Fraser Show. Bye, everybody. <laughs>